Hi, so um, today I am going to show you how to, um, if you've used the SVG kind of um, to mesh tutorial, the mesh that that is created is pretty dense and it creates a really high polygon count. So I'm going to show you how to reduce the polygon count and then in this case I added a little rotation animation. Um, so this is kind of assuming that you have created a mesh from the SVG G um, uh, tutorial. All right, so I'm going to shut down this tab in New York City. Um, go into Blender, and we'll open up one of these signs. Let's see. I need to go back in. I think I downloaded it. To file new, general. Uh, sure. I'm uh, hit A in my keyboard for select all, and then X to delete, and then file, actually, I think these were Blender files that I had. Oops, yeah, virtual sign two. Okay, so we have um, a bunch of these beautiful curves that have been um, extruded, and they look like mesh, but they're they're still kind of in this in this curve state. So the first thing that we want to do is convert all of these um, curve objects into meshes. So I'm going to select the first one, and then hold down Shift and select the last curve. All of these curves are now selected. I'm going to go into my Object tab, and then say Convert to Mesh from Curve. So now you can see all of these ha now have these mesh icons. I can select each one and they are our mesh uh, objects. I can zoom in here, forgive me, I'm on a trackpad, and hit tab. And you can see how many, how many vertices there are across these kind of flat planes. And that's a function of the way that you know, the curve was imported, how many handles it had, et cetera, et cetera. So what we want to do is reduce that file size or the, the amount of um, vertices you know, for each object. There's probably a faster way to do this, but I don't know what it is. So what I have been doing, uh, there's a bunch of plugins to like re topologies that might handle this. Um, but the one that I know is this decimate um, um, modifier. So I'm going to, and it needs to happen for each mesh. So I'm going to start in the top mesh and then kind of work my way down. So I'm going to say add modifier decimate. Uh, I'm going to use the collapse, the ratio, I'm going to set to 0.1 and see how it looks. And kind of lost a little bit of data, so I'm going to say 0.2. That looks a little bit tighter, I like that, and then I'm going to apply. So I'm going to keep doing that. Add modifier, decimate, start with 0.1, see how it looks. This is a little teeny tiny, <laughs> I think that's fine, apply. So this is going to take me a little bit of time. Uh, I'm going to keep doing this and I'll check back with you um, when I'm done. Okay, I want to come back in here because I think I found a curve that I actually don't see. This might be kind of a ghost um, artifact from the SVG um, extraction. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna delete the modifier here so I can just delete it without applying it, and I can turn on and off to preview the. Um, basically what's visible and what's not, and I can't see a difference, so I am going to go ahead and I'm going to right click and delete whatever that curve is. And then I'm on curve 17. That is a teeny tiny one, but I can see it, so I'm going to add modifier, decimate, add point 0.1 again, and apply. And I'm going to keep going.
Okay, and then on this last one, it's a large uh, shape uh, with beautiful curves. So instead of the point 0.1, I'm just going to go ahead. And it's a little bit blocky when I do that. I like the point 0.2, and I did that for a few of these objects. I'm going to apply. So now that I've reduced all of my um, polygons, um, I can export as is. Um, I did a few tests on this particular file um, or another similar file and found that some of the, the textures weren't exporting as a GLTF, TF, so I'm going to test that first. I'm going to hold down B or click B for box select and then do a box selection around all of the objects that should it, indeed select all of the mesh. And then I'm going to say file export GLTF. I want to use the um, embedded and I want to include the selected objects, the transform Y up, geometry, UVs, normals, and materials. And at this point, I don't have any animation, so I'm going to uncheck any of the animation keys. And I will scoot this object down the line and say file import. This is just to test the GLTF, make sure that it looks like what I want it to look like. Uh, here we go. Sign to GLTF. And that looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm super happy with that. So um, at this point, what I'll do is uh, hold, select the outer, um, kind of the outermost mesh, and then I'm going to hold it, uh, select B and hold down shift, the box select, B, box select, and then let's see here. I'm going to make sure that I don't have anything that I don't want selected. All right, that looks great. And so this curve one is the kind of bright highlight that's going to be like, you know, that kind of active. This is the, the outline here, the outline shape. I'm going to, I'm going to parent all of the, the kind of sub meshes to that. So I say parent and then, uh, let's see here. Do I have a parent already in there? I'm just going to clear everything and then see what happens. We should have clear parent and key transform. Interesting. box select, try the B for box select, and then select this B for box select, and then select that outer one, make sure that one's in control P. All right, so for whatever reason, <laughs> it wasn't coming up in the object um, menu. Um, so the, the, what we're trying to do is parent everything to this outer form. So B for box select, make sure that the, the kind of outer um, outer pieces, your active piece, or the one that you want to be kind of clicking on. It's just visually easiest to click on that. And then I'm going to hit Control P on a Mac and Object and Keep Transform. And that way um, I can just select this outer object and move this as a group. And now I'm going to actually keyframe. Um, uh, actually, before I do that, what I will end up doing is keyframing this outer object so that the, the animation of this outer object as it rotates will influence every other object. But right now, if I try to um, rotate this parent, it's, it's kind of funny because it's set up around this like weird uh, orange dot here, which is uh, 
the origin. So what I want to do is actually create the origin in the center of the geometry of this object. So I'm going to select uh, the object as parent is, um, select the large <laughs> parent object, and then I'm going to say object, and I'm going to um, set origin to geometry, and then I'm going to snap the cursor, which if you don't know what the cursor is, it's this weird little red and white thing. Um, I'm going to say snap cursor to selected, which is going to center the cursor on the origin that I just created. Then I'll be for box select, select the entire object, and now I'm going to say object, and then I'm going to say snap, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to say set origin to cursor, to 3D cursor. Now all of those objects um, have their kind of center or their origin in the same location. This is really important when we export for other applications like New York City, which is what we our intended outcome is. It'll make it much easier to select the object and move it around the space. All right, so now that I've done that, I can uh, rotate this object, and you see I get that kind of nice center pivot around, around, uh, around the origin. I'm going to hit um, N uh, to bring up my, my rotation information. I'm going to change my rotation from this WXYZ to XYZ Euler. And then um, <coughs> just zero out these rotations and see where we're at. All right, so that means that we're now up, upside down. So um, is that true? We are human, yeah. So this is now upside down, so I am going to rotate again around Mueller and say So I'm going to say negative 180, and then I'm going to say zero, and then zero out the rotation. So we're kind of looking at it more or less straight on. I can go into my um, view and viewport. I think it's front view. There we go. And we can see we've got this beautiful kind of flat facing. So I like a seven second rotation animation that seems to be working well for me. So seven times um, 24 frames per second, which is what we're exporting at, uh, is 168 frames. So we're going to end at 168 frames. And I'm on my first frame. I'm going to select my parent object. I'm going to hit I for insert keyframe and then set the keys for rotation. Then I'm going to go to the center, or the middle, of my timeline, which is frame 84. 84. And then I'm going to uh, set the rotation around the z-axis here to 180. And then I'm going to hit I, rotation. And then I'm going to go to my last frame, 168. And then set the rotation to one degree before 360. And that's just so that I don't get um, uh, blah, 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 359. So I don't get duplicate frames when it rotates when it uh, completes the rotation. So that in the la very last frame it's one degree off, and then on the first frame it goes back to 360. So I and uh, rotation. So the thing about um, uh, Blender and most 3D animation programs is that they'll kind of create a soft like lead-in and a soft edge onto any keyframe. You can see that when you go into like things like the graph view. So graph view here, you can see the soft lead-in. So this is the curve for the, the, the rotation. So we start at zero, we'll end up at 100 and or 359 at the very top here. 
but I don't want that kind of soft because that'll like ramp up and then kind of slow down and then ramp up and then kind of slow down. So I can just grab the handles and flatten that curve out. I can go in and kind of define um, the, the type of curves that uh, Blender will make by default, but it's easy enough, um, almost easier right now just to go in and do it by hand. Oops, I'm grabbing the wrong curve there. All right, there we go. And you can just flatten it out by literally like dragging the handle and making sure it's aligned with the, the curve. So now that we're, we're just going to kind of keep the, the same speed so that the rotation is consistent as we kind of move through each, um, each one of our keyframes. So now, uh, now that we've got the rotation on, um, on, on our object, we can export again. So this is like, like our second file, right? We exported as a GLTF. I imported it again just to double check to make sure that all the, uh, the materials came in and it looked okay. And now I've added the, the animation. So I'm gonna um, export again as a GLTF. So do a, a B for box select, select all of our objects and I'm going to say File, Export, GLTF, and then this is going to be Virtual Sign 2, and I'll name it Animation. And RH in there. And then I want to make sure it's the GLTF embedded, and I'm including the selected objects. The Transform Y up, Geometry, UVs, Normals, Vertex, Materials, and then the animation, I want to um, uh, use the default for the animation uh, settings. I don't need shape keys or skinning, um, and all the default um, settings seem to work for me in the past. And then I say export GLTF. Yeah. And I am, um, there we go, there's our file. It's 704 kilobytes, which is 0 0.704 megabytes, almost just under three quarters of a megabyte. Our target, I think, is two megabytes, so well under our, our file size limits. And then I'm going to test it in New York City, which is our final destination. So I'll go back into New York City and make sure I'm in the right room. Yes, sandbox. Say, I don't know that there was a previous version. Um, I don't think so. If there was a previous version, this is another sign. Um, I, I would want to go in and just say replace and I can replace the file and then that keeps all of the positional like data and the rotational data. Um, in this case, I don't think it's uploaded yet. So I'll just go ahead and make a new upload. So upload artwork, upload file, it's in downloads, virtual sign to with an animation, GLTF. And New York City will do a couple prop bit, little processing. It'll then give us a preview here in this window. It will always rotate your uh, 3D files no matter what. So that that rotation isn't necessarily indicative of, um, that's not the right one. <laughs> yeah, I hit blue the wrong one. All right, so here I can show you the replace feature. That's what I was trying to do. So this rotation isn't necessarily indicative of um, RH sign to animation. There we go. Isn't necessarily indicative of the animation that we'll see in the scene itself, um, but it does indicate that the files come in and that it does have um, image uh, the, the the correct materials. And I can go into preview and. It's a big room, so it takes a little bit of time to load. And... Oh, there you are. There's my sign. So we are human with a rotation, very fancy. So I will just kind of move, try to roll over. So this is like, this is where you see why it's really important, that origin these handles that I'm grabbing are um, dictated by the, the geometry, the origin, which is why I went through that whole process to kind of create the origin in the center of the geometry because the way New Art City works is you have to roll over with the kind of center of your screen over the mesh to get the handles. And if your geometry is somewhere else, you have to kind of like 
try to find where the geometry might be in space without a visual reference. All right, so that we've got now those two um, objects rotating. They are beautiful, and you can always like offset the the animations. Like you don't necessarily need to start at the same place if you have multiple of these objects rotating and you want to offset them. But anyway, I, I that's a tutorial for another time. All right, I hope this was useful, and I will sign off for now. Take care. Bye.